throw dagger. There we go. Now we can break things. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And before we get into the video, as always, a massive shout out to my wonderful Patreon supporters James Welch, Fuzzle CC, Basic Terrazan, Retro Galaxy, FanVan, Mushingski, Jet Simon, Olivia Bernier, Amari Lewis, M Mark Games, Matt, and Seth Cobble. I hope you guys enjoyed the Patreon benefits. Thanks for supporting my game dev journey. And if you want to see what's available on the Patreon, there's a link in the description. For a small monthly pledge, you can get access to all my work, my pixel art, my music, all royalty free to use in your own projects and games. Hello, guys, welcome back to the Castlevania tutorial series. Series. Today we are going to be focusing on offense. We're going to be attacking. We're going to be focusing on a crouch attack animation and I'm going to add in the first secondary weapon that you can collect. So if we take a look at the original game, we're going to create that box at the top of the screen and we're going to add in a sword or a dagger uh, weapon that we can throw at the enemies um, with a second attack button and then that secondary weapon will obviously change based on what we've got selected in that item box so if it's a uh, dagger we'll throw the dagger um, if it's i think that's the holy water we will uh, we will throw that and i think there's also an axe as well that we can throw uh, but we're going to start making those secondary weapons so that we can then pick them up in game and then that will then change our secondary weapon so going back to the event sheet, the first thing we need to do is double click into the player and we're going to need to add in a second whip animation. So let's just go ahead and copy that first one. And I'm going to call this whip three because we have whip two, which is on the stairs. Let's just put them next to each other for the sake of my OCD. Whip two is when we're attacking on the stairs. Whip one is when we're normally attacking and whip three is going to be the crouch attack. So there's not much we really need to do with this one except just change the leg placement on all the on all the sprites. So I'm going to go ahead and just, in fact, let's go ahead and look at the crouch animation here. Um, and we could probably get away with just copying that crouch pose. Deleting the legs here and then adding the crouch back in there. Let me just check there. No, it's got to be in line with the body. What am I thinking? There. Um, the only thing we're not going to need is this arm. So let's go ahead and just block that out with the color of the body. All right, it's all going to be darker. Uh, the back legs we'll put in there. Uh, and that should be fine. We just need to bring the body down now to there. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, or I'm going to get rid of that doubling up of a pixel there. I'm going to copy the base again. I'm going to go back into this one. I'm just going to delete the legs. I'm going to paste the base in. And I'm going to drag the top down. He's kind of moving. <clears throat> I think I put the legs in too low. So let me just undo. Paste those legs back in. There. Although it looks like he's moving backwards. But I think that's how we had it in the original attack animation anyway. So I'm not too concerned. Uh, let's now just copy the top or well, select the top drag it down to there delete that that duplicate uh, pixel everything else looks okay to me again get rid of the legs paste in the original legs Copy the entire upper body, drag it down. We may have to bring that one up a tad. Let's see how it looks when we play the animation. 
get rid of the legs again paste in the crouch legs drag down in fact that's just a duplicate so i can i can delete that frame right click on frame two and just duplicate it there we go delete legs paste in crouch legs align it with the upper body drag upper body down that's okay delete double up of pixel delete legs paste in crouch legs drag down and then this one I think is the same as the first one let me just check the original attack yeah so we can just right click on frame zero duplicate drag it to the end and delete the original one so let's just see how that looks yeah he is kind of jittering around a little bit we do need to kind of sort that out so let's just make sure it's all aligned in terms of height he crouches he moves back too many frames there let's just make sure his feet are in the same place it's okay if he ducks a little bit but not that much select white there we go Again, his foot placement. <clears throat> so his foot, that's as far as he can go in terms of his foot placement. So I can't move him forward anymore. So I'm going to have to move this guy back, I think. And this guy. And then move this guy forward. The main thing is that his feet are in the same position so he's grounded so he's not sliding forwards and backwards there we go i'm happy with that that looks okay to me that's whip three that's our crouch animation so let's go ahead and put that into the events so let's go back to our states so when we're in crouch set the animation to crouch now this isn't always going to be the case anymore like we did with the last episode with stairs we now need to add some conditions to the crouch state so select the block hit b on the keyboard to create a sub event now if we're in crouch we just need to basically take this block here that says are we attacking then copy it up underneath crouch so we can double click into this sub event we can go to the player and now we can do that same check and say is the player attacking if he is attacking sub event go underneath and we're going to trigger once because we don't want the animation to play over and over again if the animation uh, is crouched and we are attacking then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to set the animation of the player to whip three which is the crouch whip animation we can then grab this block underneath the stairs here hold down control and i can drag this up underneath the crouch state now this needs to be nested but not underneath the attacking player it needs to be in line if it's going to let me put it in there it's basically got to be there but let's just drag that one about it's got to be in line with those with that attacking and then we can delete that because we don't want the stair animation to play but we will put the crouch animation in so now if we're crouching and attacking oh it's because we've got there's a confliction down here on not w sorry up arrow if up arrow is pressed if we're not on the stairs it says play whip so this is uh we're gonna have to do another condition under here so let's create this is state not equal to crouch let's let's select that hold down control to copy and drag it underneath here so we've added a condition to not on the stairs if not on the stairs and not crouching then set it to whip and then select the whole block and push b and then i'm going to copy these two by selecting them holding down control and dragging them out and i'm just 
going to change not in crouch to in crouch. And then I think what I need to do now is copy that down and change this to whip three. So if we're not on the stairs, we are in crouch and we are attacking because we're pushing that button there. Set state to whip three. And then if I add down here in our movement states here in the attacking, copy and paste the block, change it to whip three and then change animation to whip three. And that should, I think, fix our problem. So we can attack up and we can attack down. Perfect. The only problem is when we finish attacking in crouch, it stays in crouch. So we need to have that on whip three animation finished, which is the same as this block up here. Uh, here, sorry, on whip two animation finish, copy and paste, and then change this to whip three set it to idle set attacking back to false now there's another thing that we're going to need to add in as well which is this collision box here this hit trigger at the moment we're triggering that hit collision to spawn in when we're on frame two of the whip animation we need to basically have that spawn in if any whip animation is playing so what i think the the quickest and easiest way to do this would be just to select that entire block i'm going to minimize it i'm going to select it i'm going to copy it and paste it two more times and I'm just going to change the animation to say whip two and this one to say whip three. Um, and because we're reusing all of this code here, we could put that in a function, which I think will be a good thing to do because we don't want to have this. We want to try and avoid repeating ourselves. So this will be a good time to add a second event sheet. So right click on the event sheets, add event sheet. Uh, I'm going to call this function events just for the sake of keeping the naming conventions the same. And then I'm going to go back to my player events and I'm going to include this event sheet. So I'm going to right click at the very bottom. I'm going to include event sheet. We're going to include functions. And then that, that basically means that anything we put in the, the uh, functions events is going to be relevant and we're going to be able to reference it in this one. So let's go back to function events, add a uh, note. We're going to right click and we're going to add a function. Our first function, and this is going to be uh, let's call it attack hitbox spawner um, and then go back to the player events and all we're going to do is we're going to take all of this code here all of these two lines under there and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to go back to my function events I'm going to paste them and I'm going to drop them in underneath there so effectively we're saying all of this stuff the same as what we were on the other one except we now can delete this and we can simply just call the function which is attack hitbox spawner and we can do the same thing here we can delete that and delete that and we can simply just copy and paste that down there and the same for this and we can just copy and paste that down there and let's give it a try and see if we can still break those blocks yeah and that's fine so now it's going to be spawning it in no matter where we are and we don't have to repeat ourselves with the code. So that's good. We've added that function in. We've got now the crouch animation. Now let's go in and design ourselves a dagger. So on the player events, uh, sorry, on the layout one, double click anywhere you like. Let's add a sprite. Uh, let's make it 16 by 16. Now zoom in and we're gonna create a dagger. I'm just gonna draw a straight line with that as our base let's just take a look at the original design so it's basically a blue handle with a kind of blue tip so let's we can replicate that i mean we're not going to rip it off everything's kind of double pixels kind of that That looks okay to me. I mean, you can make a better one. If you can make a better one, you make a better one. I'm going to just stick with that one. And then I've done that. And the image point is right down there. Always check the image point. That's something I don't like. When you resize the box, the image point goes miles away. Um, I'm going to change that back to the top left. And now that will sit 
in my HUD bar. Although, in fact, let's make sure it's on the right layer first. Just click it. Um, it is on the HUD layer. Good. Um, I don't know if that's too big. It's got to be a lot smaller than that, hasn't it, really? But let's just hit play and see what that looks like. I mean, actually, it's not too bad. Double click back into it. Right, let's put that red box around the outside. Oh. There. We can shrink it down a tad. Put the red box around the outside. And yeah, I think it needs to be. I mean, the, the original box is more of a, a rectangle. So let's just do that. Select the top two. I can drag those down. What are you dragging it? One, two, three, four. Delete those two. Let's do the same with the bottom one. That's fine. Let's delete the bottom two. And now that's going to sit nicely in my HUD as my secondary weapon. I'm happy with that. It's not a tutorial on being the best pixel artist. It's a tutorial on making the mechanics of Castlevania. So I'm happy with that. Let's uh, move on. Let's rename the sprite to HUD underscore item. This um, HUD underscore item, this one is going to have multiple frames. This is going to be where we select, it's going to show whatever weapon we have, be it the, the sword, the axe, the holy water. I think the three of those will probably be enough. Maybe a boomerang, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll do boomerang instead of holy water. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. If you've got suggestions, leave it in the comments. If you want a specific type of weapon, then let me know and we'll see. If I can put it in, I will put it in. Uh, right, so that's our HUD item. Now we need to just uh, go into this again. Sorry, just we're going to copy this sword, just the sword. Control C. And now I'm going to double click. And I'm going to create another sprite. This is going to be the actual item that we throw. So again, let's resize it 16 by 16. Put the sword in the middle. Uh, and then I'm going to use this crop feature here, and it's going to automatically crop it to within a one pixel border. Um, but if you just select the actual dagger and then hit crop, it'll put it exactly to that size. That's what I want. I want the image point to be in the left middle. So left middle there. And I want the bounding box to be the whole <clears throat> the whole width uh, sorry the whole shape of the uh, the item yeah and that's what we're going to throw so we can just pop that at the bottom there let's now give it a behavior because the behavior it's going to need is a bullet behavior because we're going to be throwing it in terms of the speed let's make it 200 set angle we're going to uncheck and we're going to say enabled. We're going to rename this one to dagger. Is that how you spell dagger or is it double G? Double G. I'm going to go with that. Um, that's going to be our dagger. So now let's run a check in the player events to see what item we have in our box. Now, player controls. We're using the up arrow key for the whip. So I think we should use the right arrow key for our secondary weapon. So let's go in here and add an event to the player controls. Let's go keyboard on key pressed the right arrow key. And I'm going to drag this one up. Let's drag it above the whip animation just so we can have it all in one place. Now push B on the keyboard to create a sub event and that's going to then allow us to run a check. So we're going to firstly check to see what frame our HUD item is displaying. So double click in here. We're going to go HUD item and we're going to compare the frame. If the frame is equal to zero. If the frame is equal to zero, we know, here it is, frame zero, that that's the dagger. So that means that we can now spawn in the dagger at the player. So let's say if um, HUD item is equal to zero, we're going to add an action and we're going to say player. And the player is now going to spawn another object. That object is going to be the dagger. At the moment, let's say we'll put it on the objects layer. And we'll say image point zero because 
we're going to need to create another animation for the player for throwing. But let's just see if that works. Yeah, it does. It's coming out of his feet because that's where image point zero is and we have no animation for it. So let's go ahead and create the throw dagger animation next. So double click into the player. We've got our whip animations. I think what I might do is copy the original whip animation. And I'm going to call this attack because I think I'm going to use the same attack animation for all of our secondary weapons because he's basically just going to be throwing something with his arm. Um, so let's get the eraser tool here. Let's get rid of the whip because he's not going to be holding a whip, but I do want him to be able to throw his arm in the same fashion as if he's throwing a dagger. So let's go ahead, get rid of all the whip there, and we'll go, that's good for frame one. And then frame two, I'm going to, if you, if you hold down control and just click on an empty space, you'll automatically get an eraser. I'm going to delete all of this. I think that's okay. We'll put his hair in over there. Yeah, that looks okay to me. And then on this one, again, we're just going to delete all of this because Again, we have no whip. And I'm going to change the size of this um, this sprite as well. I don't like that. I think. I think mm, maybe oh maybe that 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 you can you can do yours however you want. Uh, I'm being fussy with mine. So we've got frame one, two, three. I'm not going to need that one, that one, that one, or that one. I'm just going to have him go straight back to the next whatever animation it is after frame two. Um, I don't want it to loop 15. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. That's good. That's a good throw. Um, now, let's make sure that the collision boxes, uh, not the collision box, the bounding, the bounding box, the, the size of the sprite is correct. So I'm just going to select frame zero. I'm going to hit crop um, and I'm going to drag him down to there let's just check the image point is in the right place yeah it is it's just on his back toe there which is fine select this one crop it and again drop him down oh crop it and again drop him down image point image point yeah so that's all good right now let's go back to the events and let's say when we're pushing the right arrow key we are going to play that animation so let's go into player and set animation to attack play from the beginning let's see how that looks um, it's not playing it because we've got that conflicting idle um, animation. Because remember, if we're not doing anything here, we're setting the state to idle. So remember, whenever we add in something new to stop it conflicting with our idle state, we need to add another condition into this block. So at the moment, we're using our secondary attack. So, oh, actually, we can just set attacking to true because we are attacking. So if we just set attacking to true, that should automatically fix it. It doesn't fix it. So let's go ahead and set a new. Let's go ahead and set a new state. 
Uh, in fact, attacking to true can go up here because it doesn't matter what frame the HUD is on. So if we set attacking to true when we push the right arrow key, let's set the uh, uh, the state to attack as well. And then if we go back into our states under attacking, we can then add it in here. So we don't need this animation up there. We can push control X to cut that. Come down here into the attacking states and we can say system compare variable state attacking. Is that what I called it? No, I called it attack. Attack. And then paste in set animation to attack. But we're going to trigger once it because we're going to be in that state for more than a frame. And we only want that animation to play once. There we go. Um, and now we need that same condition up here that says on animation finished. If we select this whip 3 1, control C and control V, on animation finished attack set state back to idle there we go and now he's throwing he could probably use a split second longer at the end of that animation to be honest so double click in go to attack just duplicate frame two and i think i might just reduce the speed down to 12 as well better whip throw now we just need to spawn that dagger in at the right place so let's double click let's add a second uh image point so we've already got image point one here which is the whip image point which puts it right back over here so let's create another image point so we're going to right click over here add a new image point image point two is fine you can name it whatever you want uh, and on the attack animation i'm going to put that here just kind of right in the middle there on every single frame pop it there that's oh double click sorry go back into it we need to add that image point to the whole animation there it is and now when we go back to the events and we spawn that in um here we're going to add it to image point two rather than zero and we're jumping down the screen because the image point the image points are not right on the player somewhere so let's double let's check that uh, on the attack animation uh, where is the original image point oh it's up there it's for some reason set back up there did i set that by mistake um in fact let's make sure that that's always one pixel in from his back boot and then make sure that the image point two which is the attack one that's in the correct place okay that should be fine that was probably just an error on my part there we go but he's still throwing it in from his feet so let's just double check that here um yeah we're spawning that in at image point two if hud equals yeah that's correct why is it not spawning it in where i want it i think it's because it's the action to spawn it in is happening before we go to the attack animation which means that it's spawning it in on the idle frame which is here at that image point so it's probably delayed in some aspect so what I'm going to do is I think the easiest thing to do would just be to get that image point two and then right click and apply it to all animations. So no matter what animation he's in, it's always going to be an image point two where we want it. That's probably the quickest fix. And he's not fixed it. What the hell? What's going on? Image point two attack image point two number two 
Why is it? Okay. Because the number here is one on that one because we've already got another image point on the attacks. Okay, so let's just go ahead and give it a name. Instead of image point two, let's just call it attack. And then apply that to all animations. So now we've got attack equals two. This one here we don't need. We can delete that one. Walk, we don't need that one. Crouch, we don't need that one. Stairs, we don't need that one. We don't need it on jump. We don't need it on whip. And we don't need it on attack anymore. So we're going to just call it by name. Save it. Always good to save. Uh, now let's go uh, go back into here. And then instead of image point two, image point attack. There we go. And there it is. And now we can throw unlimited amounts of daggers. We can whip. And we're good. There's a few little bugs in it. Um, like when we attack in the air, we can't move when we land. But I'm going to go ahead and fix those in the next episode. I think we've done quite a bit today. We can crouch attack. We can't crouch and throw daggers. But again, we can add all of that stuff in. It's just going to be a case of tweaking the lines. We probably can't attack on the stairs. Oh, we can attack on the stairs. But it's also doing the whip as well. Oh, and we're not throwing the dagger both ways. Let's just fix that um, throwing the dagger both ways thing. Uh, and then I think I'm going to leave it there. So when we press the uh, right key, we're checking the frame, but we also need to check which way the player is facing. So again, select the whole block, add B on the keyboard. Let's just double click and we're going to say player. And we're just going to check to see if they are mirrored. Um, I'm going to copy that block out and paste it again. And then I'm going to invert that one. And I'm going to put both of these above the HUD item. Um, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave that underneath. I'm going to put is mirrored. And then, in fact, I'm, I've changed my mind. Delete those two things there. Still in the player controls. Let's add an action and just say dagger. And we're going to go on created because every time it's created, I want to check to see which way the, f the player is facing. So dagger on created, hit B on the keyboard. And now we're going to check to see if the player is mirrored. And I'm going to copy that and paste it again and again, invert it. And now when the dagger on create, if player is mirrored, we're going to mirror the dagger too. So we're going to say dagger set mirrored. And I'm going to copy that by holding control and dragging it down. And I'm going to say not mirrored. And that should sort that problem out. Uh, well, it yeah, it turns the dagger around, but we need to change the speed. So let's go dagger. Uh, go down to the bullet behavior. Set speed to 200. Copy that, drag it down. Uh, and then if we're mirrored, we want it to be minus 200 on the speed. So we're going to go minus 200 on the speed of it's mirrored. 200 on the speed of it's not. There we go. We're all good. We can now throw daggers in any way that we want. Uh, oh, and there's one more thing I want to add in. As we're just sticking with the dagger here, we may as well put the collisions on the, the candlestick so we can break them with the daggers. Um, so let's go back down to destructible. Um, hit trigger on collision with those things, we can break them. We're just going to add in now the exact same block, dagger on collision with another object. We're going to say uh, sprite. I think that's our destructible block. We need to rename that. Um, and I can just copy that out. In fact, can I? I can't put that up there. I'm going to copy that down into there. In fact, I'm going to copy this whole block here, drag it down and just double click into it, go back go back and change hit trigger to dagger on collision with candles 
Uh, but we also want to destroy the dagger when it hits things as well. So we're going to go dagger destroyed. Otherwise, the dagger will just fly through the air and just destroy everything. Uh, same with that one there. Copy that up. So now we've got dagger on collision with sprite destroy everything. Let's just rename that um, sprite here to uh, block. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Throw dagger. There we go. Now we can break things. Um, yeah, let's let's finish off fixing the bugs and everything in the next episode. I don't want the episodes to be too long. I feel like we've made some pretty good progress today. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, thanks for watching if you made it this far, as always. And uh, I'll catch you in the next episode.